from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Now, um, I don't know how many of you have been following this. Probably most of you haven't been, but I'm in the media business, so we follow it. Uh, there have been a lot of stories about the competition between the Fox News Channel and CNN. You know, one time there was just CNN, and when the Fox News Channel came on, everybody said, nobody's going to beat CNN, nobody's going to have higher ratings than CNN. And it turned out later that when they did Fox News Channel, they, instead of uh, modeling it after CNN, which was just repeating the same news over and over and over, uh, the Fox News Channel was based on talk radio. Literally, it's based on talk radio. So rather than repeating the same news over and over, they have talk shows where people scream at each other. Mostly conservative people screaming at each other. That's what it is. And uh, so even though it's called Fox News Channel and it's considered a news network, they found a way to have three times the audience of CNN. you got to give them credit for, uh, I'm, I'm a marketing guy. That's, that's what I do. But the problem with all of this is that CNN now is desperate to try to pull even with the Fox News Channel. And so what they have done is... Um, and I only noticed this to the extent that it's happened since I was in Europe recently and I saw something called CNN International, which we don't generally see here. There's a few offbeat cable systems that carry it or carry portions of its day. But when I was in France recently, I was watching CNN International and I was realizing how dumbed down CNN has become. And not only has it become dumbed down, it is... It is becoming like the Fox News Channel. You got people with a pay. You, you never saw people on CNN giving their opinion about anything. Ever. You know, they, they gave you the news. They were journalists giving you the news. And the Fox News Channel put people on the air who were yelling and screaming. So now CNN puts people on the air who are ranting and raving. That guy Lou Dobbs, who reminds me of that uh, character Howard Beale from the movie Network. This guy used to do like boring stock market reports suddenly he's on tv ranting and raving about illegal immigration it's like where did that come from well, where it came from is that cnn is desperately trying to compete with the fox news channel and so i can't i guess they've just gone into all the people who do the news and said uh whatever your opinion is just start giving it very loudly it's obvious somebody has gone in there and said you know just go in there and start screaming or ranting and raving about stuff so i'm watching cnn and this was uh, this week, as a matter of fact. I'm watching CNN, and one of the anchor people is apoplectic about a TV commercial for, of all things, Clearasil. Now, you will hear the anchor person ranting and raving here, but what you will also hear is the commercial, which is one of a series of three. So let's listen to CNN reporting on the Clearasil spot, and you will hear the anchor person, whose name I can't remember, but it, it really is irrelevant. But it's it's not only the Clearasil spot I want you to hear, uh, it's his reaction to it. And secondarily, it's the fact that CNN has just turned into the ranting and raving channel trying to compete with the Fox News channel. Here it is. We all know sex sells. It's used in commercials, in movies, in TV. But should sex be used to sell stuff to teenagers? New provocative ads for the acne cream Clearasil have parents really upset including Mike Galanos. I I'm a parent. I'm a little, I'm a little upset myself here, here too. This is tonight's get to the point segment. And boy, whoo. Let's face it. We work with some pretty open-minded people. Some of the words they used, appalling, disgusting, give you the creeps. We're talking about clear cell here to help with teens with acne for years now. Well, they've got this may cause confidence campaign. A couple of racy ones. One of them here, we basically have a 16 year old hitting on his friend's mom. Let's check it out. Hi, guys. Hey, I'm going to get my stuff. 
So, Miss Kelly, how are things? Everything good? Yeah, thanks. Must be lonely now that Mr. K left. I'm really good company. Clearasil Ultra Treatment Cream starts working instantly to eliminate bacteria that cause acne. Clearasil may cause confidence. Now, what you don't see when you're listening to the audio is the, the right after he says, I'm really good company, he takes his finger and sticks it in the bowl of what looks like cake batter that Mrs. Kelly is whipping up there and licks it very suggestively. <laughs> now we have the other commercial, and this is also in the same... Uh, and we've played this once on the air before, but uh, this is in the same uh, theme. Uh, in other words, there's there's a campaign called uh, uh, Clearasil May Cause Confidence. And they have a website, of course, that goes with this. And, you know, these commercials are just made to be played on YouTube. I mean, they're just made for it. And sure enough, they're all over YouTube if you haven't seen them. So uh, here is one. And uh, in this one, because you, you can't see it, maybe you've seen it, but you can't see it here. In this one, there's three people sitting on a sofa. Um, we're not really sure uh, how these people are related to each other, but it looks like uh, an older woman. And in the middle of the three is a guy who looks like he's trying to date the older woman's daughter. Okay, but he's like this uh, very nervous teenager. He's just kind of sitting there looking very sweaty and nervous. And then finally at the end of the sofa is the daughter. And we are looking at a photo album of the daughter when she was a little girl. And so mom is showing the guy pictures of the girl when she was little. And this is what this Clearasil commercial sounds like. Here's when we brought her home from the hospital. Yeah. Here's her first tooth. Isn't she cute? Yeah. Oh, and here she is naked in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> you should see me now. No. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Clearasil Daily Face Wash. <laughs> Visibly clearer skin without drying out your face. There you go. Clearasil may cause confidence. That's the spot right there. Uh, there there's actually a, a total of three of these. Uh, the third one involves a, uh, uh, it looks like a college professor who's nervous, and uh, um, the uh, student stands up. <laughs> In the lecture hall and suggests that it would might make him less nervous if he could imagine them naked. Um, now, Clearasil was like mom and apple pie, right? I mean, Clearasil was the all-American product. Dick Clark used to advertise on American Bandstand. I mean, it was the kind of thing you'd see on, I don't know, you probably would have seen a commercial with Clearasil, I would imagine, on like Ozzie and Harriet or Leave it to Beaver back in the day. And now, let's face it, the people the age to use Clearasil now are different than they were in the 1950s. Why pretend that 14 and 15 and 16-year-olds are not sexualized as they are? And since they are, what's wrong with having commercials that play to what they're really like as opposed to what we'd like them to be like? I mean, you've got to be kidding. Does anybody here think that 14 and 15-year-olds don't act like the kids in these commercials? And we, we've talked about it on the air. We've had them call in on the program. Are these commercials really so controversial? There's a guy from CNN. Disgusting. It's disgusting. It's like, shut up. We don't need your opinion. And uh, just like the teacher who's complaining about the Carl's Jr. and Hardy spots for flat buns, um, they, they CNN gets sucked into this. They get sucked into helping Clearasil sell Clearasil. When's the last time the Tom Likas show talked about Clearasil? Never, ever. When's the last time CNN had a panel discussion about Clearasil? Never. This is brilliant, brilliant marketing in the age of the Internet. It's brilliant. I am a marketer. I am an, in the advertising business my whole life. I live for it. I'm never ashamed to be in this business. You know, people knock advertising and they knock marketing and they complain about big companies. I'm a big supporter. This business has made me wealthy beyond my wildest dreams. And when somebody does a good job of marketing, I am thrilled. Thrilled. I just, I, it's breathtaking to see a great ad. 
and especially a great ad that perfectly hits the target demographic. And, and people who complain about this just are not being realistic about what 15-year-olds are like today. They're not. 15-year-olds have webcams in their bedrooms and PayPal accounts, and if you send money, they'll do a strip tease for you right there in their, their parents' uh, house in, in their bedroom with the door locked. 15-year-olds are uh, engaging in all kinds of sexual uh, acts. They, they're they on uh, YouTube and they're on MySpace. They've got digital cameras taking pictures of their private parts, taking pictures of themselves naked, sending them all around the Internet. I mean, come on. Who are we kidding? Should Clara still run commercials like in the old days, you know, and two people go to the malt shop and talk about having a zit? I mean, is, is, should they be doing that? Come on. Stupid. And same thing with the uh, the Hardys and Carl's Jr. spots. With the teacher uh, the dancing on the desk and the kids singing about uh, flat buns. And, you know, who are we kidding here? Are you telling me that uh, the uh, 13 and 14 and 15-year-olds who are targeted in this commercial... Uh, are not going to react to that in a positive manner and go buy the product? <laughs> are you kidding me? All I wish is that I still own that uh, CKE stock, the uh, company that owns Carl's Jr. and Hardee's. I, I wish I still own that stock because I think sales are going to go through the roof as a result of this controversy. It's fantastic. Why would anybody object to this? I I've got to know. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. No. Tom Likas. I'm telling you, when a man buys you a drink, he's hoping to get you uh, uh, liquored up so that you will uh, not resist his advances. I, I just don't believe I can't believe well, it. I know, you, I know you can't believe it, <laughs> but but you know what? It's the truth. Oh, God. The Tom Likas Show. <laughs> The Tom Likas Show at one 800 800 tom Let's go to your telephone calls here. Let's say a little Brandy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Brandy. How are you? Do you care, darling? Yeah, sure, I do. I'm doing great. Good. I'm doing good, too. Thanks for asking. No, I didn't particularly <laughs> care, but go ahead. <laughs> um, I'm really glad that you brought this topic up today. Me and my boyfriend were just vacationing over the weekend, and we were having the same discussion, but generally more about your show. And he used to listen to your show. He actually turned me on to your program, but now he doesn't listen anymore. He strictly just listens to AM talk radio. And I keep listening. To, well, do you still do the tasting room? Yes. Okay. And when does it come on? Saturdays at 3 o'clock? No, it moved. Now it's Sunday nights at 7. Oh, no wonder. I keep, I keep thinking that I miss it. I love that show. I'm a wine collector myself. Thank you. And um, I'm really glad that you segmented your shows where you can call in and you don't have to, or you not call in, but you can listen on certain days and you're not talking about certain things. So you know, if you don't want to listen to something one day, you don't have to listen. You can not listen that day. Or if you don't want to hear about Like It's 101 or on Fridays and a half, Flash Fridays, you don't have to tune in that day. But mainly I was just saying to him, did you see the Today Show today? No, I, I don't ever see the Today Show. There was a young lady on there that was talking about this exact same topic, about how, who cares about Britney? It's not newsworthy. I well, heard, I we're heard not talking like, about Britney Spears. We're talking about Clara Sill and uh, we're talking right. about Carl's Jr. But the general topic is the demoralization of society by television. The, the demoralization. I don't think you mean demoralization. <laughs> yeah. That's not a proper word. Well, demoralizing, is that a word? No, well, it's a word, but it's, you're not using it properly. You're trying to, <laughs> what you are trying, let me guess. You are trying to say that somehow society is lowering moral standards? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, I think that television and the media is doing that to society. How are they doing that? Like, I don't think that the Carl's Jr.'s commercials are bad. I think it's funny, actually. But I just think that this, this, the news stories that the media runs and the commercials, I just think that it's saying it's okay. It is okay. To, God bless America. We have freedom. You are free not to buy the products. But then people complain when they go out and then they're treated like a-holes because nobody has any standards anymore. Then what, what does a Clearasil commercial have to do with how people treat you when you go out? Well, the commercials, I think, you know, some of them are comical. They're funny. They're meant to be funny. 
sure. And I think that's okay. And that's why I agree and disagree with what the gentleman earlier was saying. You know, but I think you should stick up for things that you believe in because there are a lot of things in the media that aren't right. Don't you agree? Uh, put it this way. I, I believe in the First Amendment. I believe if you don't like something, you shouldn't watch it. And if you see something you don't like, like an advertisement and you, you're offended by it, you shouldn't buy the product. And also in our discussion, I was telling him how well, I keep believe in mind, that your dear, show does that too. Keep in mind, dear, that uh, you're not the target demographic of Carl's Jr. So if you're offended, I have to believe they don't really care. I'm offended by your show sometimes. That's good. You're not in the target demographic of my show either. <laughs> but don't you think that other people are offended too? Like I don't care. Matter, like you were saying, like I don't care. You have to understand. You have to understand where I'm coming from. I'm worried about serving the target audience of the show, and I'm not worried about offending the people who are not in the target audience. And no, you're not. Your and, and you're not. What do you mean, my morals? What about my morals? You my, don't feel bad for do you know what my job you is? You know what my job is? I'm in the advertising business. My job is to get the largest number of people in the target demographic to say they listen to the Tom Likas show. Never. And when they do, uh, we can raise the price of advertising to our advertisers. And then makes all of us very rich. That's free enterprise. And it doesn't bother you that things that you say, even though you're making money, you're making money, you're hurting people. I'm not hurting anybody. Who am I hurting? Well, some people call and you give them advice to do bad things to others. Uh, well, you, you think it's bad. Uh, I don't happen to think it's bad. I think when somebody has children with someone else and you're telling them to break up their marriage, that might be yeah, bad. Yeah, well, I, again, I think, if someone's un <laughs> I think if someone's unhappy, they should not stay in an unhappy marriage. So we have a difference of opinion on that. They shouldn't have got married in the first place, then, but they should try to well, work Well, again, I, I do think that uh, many people uh, stupidly rush into marriage because women hound and harass us to get married to them. It's not always the women. It usually is. <laughs> and uh, then once we're stuck in those marriages and the sex goes away, many of us feel miserable. But by the way, this take us way off the subject here. Yes, yes, you're right. You're the right, bottom right. line here is that uh, it's a free country. You have a right to listen or not listen. And uh, we don't care if you do or you don't because you're not in the target demographic. But it's like that guy was saying earlier, eventually we have to say something. We have to take a stand because it's going to get so bad. Well, we would, but you can take a stand all you want. The fact is you're free to take a stand, and I'm free to do my show. It's a free country. Sure. All right. Have a great day. That's it? You're going to fold like a house of cards? I'm not folding. I'm going to, I'm going to believe whatever I want to believe, and but, you're going but to believe you, whatever you want But to that believe. was true before but, you ever called in. The bottom line is that I wish other people would try to stand up for it, too. But they do. They do. You know what? what? You know how people saying. stand up for what they believe? They stop listening. No, 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 no. I mean, with the television. Like that one guy was saying about there's all this stuff on HBO and shows. People who are offended will cat will that has nothing to do with anything. It's what's on the public television. And like what you were saying about CNN going down. You have every right not to watch. You see, what you want to do is you want to take things you object to away from the people who don't object to them. No, I don't care. I just, you're right. You're right. You're right. Maybe I do because I wish that there some of those things wouldn't be on television so that if my kid is accidentally in the living room switching through channels while he's watching Nickelodeon, that he doesn't come across a Carl's Jr. Wait, wait, hey, 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 TVs have V-chips. Uh, cable boxes now have blocking features. Exactly. You have so every you know opportunity. Why shouldn't, the, why shouldn't the public media just be wholesome? Uh, because, first of all, uh, you're, uh, one person's wholesome is another person's vulgar. That's number one. Number two, right, subjective. Number two, the broadcasting industry went to great expense, and I'm not exaggerating, uh, to institute a system where there are ratings on programs and there are chips in televisions that will block your ability to see particular uh, shows above a certain rating, and you can block them so your kids can't see them. Now, you've got the, you've got the tools to do it. Use them. I don't have children. Well, if you did, then why, <laughs> why do you even care if stuff is offensive to children then? Because I, I care about everyone. I oh, care about yes. My you're, friends, you're doing children. this as a favor. To, well, fine. Why aren't your friends, why aren't your friends responsible and using the tools that are available? Well, actually, a lot of my friends don't let their kids watch television Fantastic. at all. Fantastic. That's, that's one way of doing it. Another way is to find out what the ratings are and how to use the V-chip. 
and it, it will it will block programs that you don't want your kids to see. I'm going to start being more proactive about it. And that's but, but what again, I was trying why, to do by like calling the show. Is but, say, I wish that people would be more proactive about what they don't want to see. And you know how you said that the demographic for Carl Jr. It doesn't is matter. patronizing. That's how they'll stop. No, but they're not. But that's the point. The target audience is going to patronize them more because they have a cool commercial on. And not only is it a cool TV commercial, it's a cool clip on YouTube and places like that on the right. Internet. It's a ringtone. Kids think it's great. And they're going to buy more products from Carl's Jr. and Hardee's as a result. So you, you you can object to it all you want, but it's only in your mind, this idea that 12-year-olds are going to rise up and say, we're tired of all those suggestive commercials, and we, we object. No, they don't object. They're marching right down to Carl's Jr. to buy a patty melt as we speak. Well, I would encourage others that don't agree with such things to boycott it. Yeah, but uh, the point is, dear, the people who object are not in the target demographic. It's like what I said about my show. The people who object to my show are not in the target audience. I don't object to your show, and I'm not in your tar- target audience. I'm not, no, no. I said those who object are not in the target. Right. Those who object are not in the target. If 68-year-old women are offended by the Tom Lycus <laughs> show, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. In fact, if, if 68-year-old women loved listening, if they loved listening... I love your show. I listen all the time. <laughs> I, everybody here at the condominium, they all listen. If, if if I was getting calls like that, I wouldn't be doing my job. Well, unfortunately, it seems like there's so many people in this world that everybody now has a target audience. Yes, that's because there were so many TV channels. In Los Angeles, uh, there were 81 radio stations. Uh, you live in Ventura County. You get the L.A. stations and Oxnard and Ventura have radio right. stations. You probably have 100 radio stations. Uh, yes, so we need to do things to stand out, and we need to pick and target audience and talk to them. Uh, we can't do a radio show for people from 12 to 80. You can't do it. So then what's your suggestion for things that people do object to, getting rid of things don't that Don't do watch object them to. and don't buy the products they advertise if you object. But keep in mind that many times you will object and you will not. Be, they don't care if you object because you're not the audience they're trying to reach. Mm-hmm. Right, but there are many women who hate this show. Many. And you hear them call all the time. Guess what? We don't care because they're not in the target audience. That was kind of my original point when I called is that me and my boyfriend were having this discussion about how I think you're such an intelligent person. But I just don't see I just don't see how you well, I'm not I'm not a college do. professor. <laughs> I'm a radio personality who's in the advertising business. And, and I use my intelligence to make money. I am not here to enlighten the masses or teach a class other than like this 101. I am not here to teach a class on political science. I'm not here to teach a class on mathematics or grammar. I am here to make money. But just you like you, that, by the way, just like whatever done, your job. If you, were doing, if you were doing something that you knew hurt people, would you do it? I'm not doing something that I believe hurts people. But it does. No, because you disagree with me. You assume it hurts people. How about the people? Disagree, disagree with everything. That how you about all the people who call in here and say I was in a miserable marriage and I heard your show and I dumped that bitch and now I'm happier than I've ever been? What about those people? What about the people that you get on the air, dump their girlfriends on the air? That's great. But the fact is, the people who are offended, let's take the women who get dumped. They're not in our target audience. So if they're offended, we don't care. <laughs> we don't care. You have to understand how it works. Okay. You see how it works? Now, if I was offending young men, if young men were offended by something I was doing on the air, I'd have to look at stopping doing whatever that was. Then you just do a lady show. No, no, no. <laughs> if young men were offended I and, and they let me know it, I'd stop doing whatever they were offended by. Not be, Not because it's the right thing to do, but because I don't want to hurt my business. You see? This is yeah. a business. This is a business. Just like you have a job and you work for a company, this is a business. We're here to make money. Sure. And so my job... Junior and Clearsill. We're all here to make money. And by the way, (laughs) I'm in the advertising business like they are, and I salute both those companies and their ad agencies and their marketing people for being brilliant. Because we are on the radio talking about Clearsill and Carl's Jr., Something I didn't want to talk about clear show cards, but I will tell you, there, there are a lot of companies all over the world that are in the business to make money that those people that work for them die for those companies. Just because they're in the business of making money doesn't That make has nothing money. to do with what we're talking about here. 
Excuse me? That has nothing to do with what we're talking about here. No, but you're just saying, I'm in the business of making money, and, I mean, it doesn't well, make it right. Well, making a product that kills people is criminal. And there are laws about that kind of thing. Uh, but doing um, a commercial that, a that, that offends that uh, doing a commercial kill. that offends people? No, that's not that's not illegal. And it shouldn't be. I, just, I mean, I don't think it's good when somebody gets dumped and they go into a, a sea of depression and angst and commit suicide over something that, that you Well, well radio you, I'll tell you why. Do. When you provide me with one name of someone who committed suicide as a result of the Tom Likas show, I'll look at that. Do you know anyone? No. I, I'm sure you don't. And uh, Have you read about that in the news ever happening? You probably wouldn't, no. Yeah. Well, what do you mean you probably wouldn't? It'd be good advertising for you, though, maybe, huh? Darling, if someone committed suicide and said it was because they were listening to the Tom Likas show, I guarantee you that would be a news story. Yeah. Have you seen one? Why don't you Google and see if there is such a story? And I'll save you the time. There isn't. Right. And that's the bottom line. What if someone commits suicide? Well, gee, what if somebody uh, strapped dynamite to themselves in the middle of the rush hour and blew themselves up? I mean, and it's like that lady was saying on the news today. Things trickle down. You know, the, the news media to giving these stories that aren't newsworthy trickles down to the next, to the next, to the next, and it just becomes completely ridiculous. The well, that they show on television because everybody thinks it's okay. They, but that's my point. If everybody thinks it's okay, who are you to say it isn't? I mean, we all... You're we making, all you just made my point for me. You you, you just made right my point. Wrong. You said everybody thinks it's okay. That's that's what a free country's all about. If everybody thinks something is okay, why shouldn't it be there? I'm not going <laughs> to... I'm waiting for your response, darling. A lot of things. I mean, do you think it's okay for half the men that have to pay child support? What? For kids? I mean, you talk about that topic a lot. Darling, I talk about vagina money. And you talk about, I mean, child support, a lot of men out there, and there is a story actually about a guy that committed suicide up in Seattle or Northern California. I can't remember which. I heard about it in the news. Yes, it was up in Washington State. Yes. 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 Who committed suicide because he had to pay child support. He couldn't afford it. So what does that have to do with what we're talking? What does that have to do with what we're talking about? That's not right. What does that have to do with what we're talking about? Because you said everybody thinks it's okay. Well, everybody thinks it's okay for men to get raped on child support and alimony. Well, I don't think that, that. doesn't make it okay. Well, I don't think that. What are we going to do about it? Well, probably nothing. <laughs> do you see my point? No, but I, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I see you as a prissy little moralist and elitist who thinks that she knows best for the rest of us. That's what I said. I don't think I know anything more than anybody. Well, then who are you to tell us what we can watch on TV or what we can listen to on the radio? And I don't think you should watch her or anything that you don't want to. My point is, is that I would like... No, to you, would like, you would like it to be the Brandy Network. You would like everything to be vetted through you, and you're going to decide what, what is moral and what isn't and what the rest of us should be able to see and not see. No, That's what you want to do. percent of the time, my opinions are different from other people's. Well, then, then, then you're making my point for me. The, re you. the reason the shows are the way they are is because more people want to see them than don't. And you're in the minority. And it's broadcasting. And broadcasting is democratic. I the shows with the highest ratings stay the on the air. Right and what's wrong. And certain things are right and certain things are wrong. Well, guess what? Uh, the, the, the shows that are on are on because they have ratings. They have ratings because people are watching. Or on the like radio, like listen. Like a train wreck. Well, it doesn't and matter. Looking. This is how it works. <laughs> Uh, the, the deer, get used to it. That's what's like living in a free country. Uh, you you want to uh, tell you what? Go to uh, go to the Middle East and let the local Ayatollah tell you what you can watch on TV, and you'll, you'll be happier there. No. We have a free country. You should be glad you live in a free country. Okay. And if you don't want to watch something, just don't watch it. Hold on a second, Brian. What do you want to say to Brandy here? Well, it's just complete elitist attitude going on. It's. Uh... You know, I think she. I think she knows what's going on. She's uh, she's saying how she feels, and you can hear it kind of, you know, kind of whittle away as you keep talking with her. But for her to think that just whatever, you know, whatever she's saying is right, and that should be the way everyone should uh, should see things. That's just completely elitist. Which is not what I'm saying. Not nah, you're saying you're saying that everything. You're just saying that. Uh, 
because you think it's wrong, no one else should have access to that information. No, actually, what I'm saying is is that I think more people should be like that guy that called earlier. And if they don't think it's right, maybe people should start sticking up for what they believe in a little bit more. Well, just, I mean, that's, that's, that's capitalism. You, you speak with your actions. You don't speak by protesting or telling people they shouldn't do other things or whatever. Everybody has their own morals. That guy speaking out sold more Hardee's and Carl's Jr. than the commercial itself. I don't want to be against the commercial. Or but, the his, but his commercial speaking part. out will result in more people seeing the commercial more often. Right. And and but but I thought you objected to it, or you thought that what he did was good. I don't object to the Carl. What Jr. he did was counterproductive to his cause. You know, if I see I something, that. if I see something I object to, here's what I do: nothing. Mm -hmm. You know why? I don't want to call people's attention to it. I don't want more people to see it. And that's what I was, when I first called in, I said, I think that that was a great point that you made. Stop buying the product. Right, but, you, but guess what? The target audience won't stop. If they ever do, that's when the commercials will be pulled. I'm saying I think they should. <laughs> well, great. Well, you tell that to the 13-year-old boys who think that's a cool commercial. Good luck. <laughs> I will. Thank you, Tom. Thank you both. Tom Likes. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Oh, that is so irritating to hear you say that. It's the Tom Likes Show. Show from Hollywood. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. We are talking about well, advertising, which is my business, and I I love talking about advertising. I'm I am proudly in the advertising business, and I might say that I am a second generation um, advertising person because my father. Uh, worked at the New York Post newspaper for 43 years, uh, and um, I am very proud of this business. I know that there are excesses, and I know there are badly produced commercials sometimes, or bad newspaper ads, or bad TV commercials. Yes, yes, head on, apply directly to the forward. Yes, by the way, one of the most effective TV commercials today. As bad as it is. So I am at, you know first in line to show my admiration for great, great advertising. And these are spots from Clearasil, the May Cause Confidence campaign, and the Flat Buns campaign for Carl's Jr. and Hardy's. Brilliant. Brilliant. All these people getting upset about it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Colin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Colin. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. What up? I uh, just thought I'd call and let you know uh, I'm the voice behind the Flat Buns commercial. Uh, do you do all the Carl's commercials or just this no, one? No, no, not not the uh, the end voice, the actual rapping voice on the uh, on the Flat Buns. Oh, is that so? That's me. <laughs> How great is that? Yeah, so I'm enjoying hearing it all over the radio and TV. Everyone's calling me, telling me they're, they're hearing it, so it's, it's a nice thing. It's a good look. Now, if you may, don't mind me asking. Uh, you, you, of course not. <laughs> I mean, do, do you get residuals on that, or do you just get paid yeah, once? Yeah. I yeah? um, haven't seen any yet. It takes a little while for that to start coming in, but uh, I will start seeing some. Oh, you're going to be seeing a lot. So everyone thinks it's funny. Everyone sees the TV ad, and they think it's those two kids that are rapping it when they're they're just actors. They're lip syncing. So yeah. I thought I'd come on with you and set the record straight. Now, are, are, are you a rapper in real life? or what? <laughs> Yeah, rapper, musician. I do mostly hip-hop music, but uh, I do all kinds of music. Um, and did somebody at the ad agency write that song, or did you? Yeah, it was all written. The idea, the concept was all through the Mental Design uh, Agency. They just called me in to voice it, so... I can't take credit for the lyrics, but um, I actually did a couple parody versions for uh, radio stations that might get played around L.A. So, Oh, could you email one to us? Yeah, sure. I'll work on one for you, Tom. We would love to hear it. I will get right on that. Fantastic. Well, congratulations. A great performance. It's Thank a great you very ad. Much. Thanks for, for uh, supporting the ad. It, I, I, I think it's got Cleo written all over it. I do. <laughs> cool. I appreciate it, Tom. All right. Thank you. Thanks. There he goes. He's the voice... 
of one of the rappers in the commercial. Ah, love it. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Trevor on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, it's an honor. I know. I just wanted to call and let you know I heard about this on the radio. I was one of the people that went and looked it up because all these people whining about it. By the way, go to YouTube and see uh, this exactly spot. Where I went. You can see the Clearasil spots. No, I just checked out the Carl's Jr. one. That's the first one I heard about. Check out the Clearasil spots, baby. They're they're funny, too. I'm going to get on that. But, yeah, I just want to let you know that these people calling in, whining, and complaining about the commercials, I'm one of those people that they brought it to my attention, so I went and looked it up. Good for you. Well, and I'm glad to hear that, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. If people didn't protest this stuff, it wouldn't get nearly the traction it gets. Yeah, it made me that much more interested. And I, some, I'd be willing is, to bet. I'd be willing to bet that without even thinking about it, there you are out in the IE. I'd be willing to bet that you will at some point tool into Carl's Jr. just because you've been seeing it and hearing about it so much. Of course. Yeah. And I just want to, like, whenever something's that controversial, you got to check it out. Whether you like it or not, you want to see it. Right. And so, I mean, if you're going to complain about hating it, there's going to be people that love it just as much as you hate it. So you are you are right about that. By the way. People who don't live in L.A., people in Dallas, Portland, Detroit, in the middle of the night, i.e. Inland Empire, the area about 50 miles east of Los Angeles. <clears throat> we, every once in a while, make a mistake and forget to tell you that, but, but I'm telling you now. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Joe on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing, my friend? Doing Great. Listen, man, I work in the media advertising, so I work on promoting shows, television shows. And I think what people neglect to realize is, like, you are an entity. You are a product, and you've set yourself up like that, correct? Of course. Or you've taken yourself, and you've gotten all these advertisers behind you to promote you, thusly pay you, pay the people that work for you, and so on and so forth. So all of this demographic study stuff that people kind of ignore because they're out there protesting it and driving more people to the product is doing nothing more than making more money, not just for Carl's Jr., but also the products or the shows that they're maybe being advertised in. And Absolutely. that's the big thing that people are neglecting, I think, to, to really understand. So you talk about the ratings, uh, like that one, that girl that was maybe five callers back who was, well, who cares about the ratings? Well, more ratings means more money, means I can go to... Carl's Jr. and say, hey, by the way, X amount of listeners are listening to the Tom Likas show. Therefore, you're going to get that that much more, you know, people listening to your product. That's right. So, uh, you know, all of this kind of leads me to my to my next point that as much as people are sitting there complaining and, you know, mo moaning and what have you, uh, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to do anything. And especially in today's. No, it is going to do something. It's going to sell more product. No, correct. But in today's viral marketing, I mean, a lot of these things that start in like five multi-tiered campaigns. It's like three commercials, and then they just rely on YouTube and all of this kind of thing. Uh, there was yeah, and these spots, I, these spots are getting heavy viewing on YouTube, and they almost look like they were made for YouTube. Exactly. And the trend now is to actually make video commercials that are going to run during you know television breaks that almost look like they are viral web videos. So you have to stop and ask yourself, was that real? Is that fake? What's going on? And we're all targets to it. Yeah. Uh, there, you know, there was an article in Time Magazine that said, you know, Christ himself could not, you know, have matched the hype that surrounded the iPhone. And look how many people bought that thing. Dopes. So, <laughs> <laughs> Standing in line, dopes. Exactly. And then two months later, there's a $100 price reduction and people are all, you know, up in arms about uh, oh look Tom, at that! It's on. It's on the. Uh, it's on the uh, L.A. Angels game right now. Right. <laughs> it's everywhere. It's I everywhere. Know. Yes, it is. And you're everywhere. And uh, congratulations for taking the time over the past however many years you've been in broadcasting and developing yourself as a product. And all the people that call in and bitch and moan and complain and kick and scream, you're doing nothing more than paying Tom. That's exactly right. Please continue to complain. Our email address is my name, Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.